uh, innovative mica-based composite for protecting and uh, uh, isolating of uh, uh, lithium-ion uh, batteries. I'm going to share this with uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Chris Steveker. And uh, I hope you can also see the, uh, the agenda for this uh, presentation. So basically today we are going to discuss about uh, uh, four role and this uh, MICA supply chain. We are also going to discuss about MICA processing and how we are able to transform uh, the MICA in composite materials that are suitable for battery protection. And in the second part of the, the presentation, we are going to focus about some key uh, uh, innovative application for uh, battery in general. Especially in the last year, we have been focused on two main applications. One is for cell spacer, uh, and the second is for uh, uh, protection of battery cover. All this comes together with a lot of uh, uh, features regarding this material. Uh, the main important ones are the fire barrier performance and the thermally insulating characteristic of this material. For, uh, for those that are not very informed about our company, For All is a global holding established in 83 with headquarters in Switzerland. It counts about 1,000 employees supporting three different core markets. So For All today supported the high voltage market, the low voltage market, and the composite uh, market, where uh, basically we position ourselves as very high integrated manufacturer. So we can supply from resin to pre-prec uh, uh, and to final products uh, that can be um, uh, rigid part, 3D parts or composite machine parts. We have uh, competencies in resin formulation, in composite manufacturing, and in supporting our customer to develop a specific solution, like the ones we are speaking about today, which are really related to uh, MICA-based products where for roll is a market leader. Before I'm going into details about uh, this application, and, I sp and we explain why basically MICA is uh, uh, used for uh, battery application, especially for automotive uh, uh, market, for, and for all the e-mobility in general, it's really important to understand what MICA uh, is and what is the, what are the key features of these uh, specific uh, raw materials. So mica is a type of phyllosilicate material that exhibits two-dimensional sheets of uh, uh, layer structure. Uh, it starts basically from pegmatite and uh, is basically extracted from mines and uh, it has a very specific uh, multi-layer uh, structure. The structure that you see on the left uh, for uh, um, uh, into this chart is basically um, representing uh, uh, a structure of the mica that can cover two um, several different uh, possible grades of this mineral. Uh, this mineral normally contains an octahedral complex of uh, uh, aluminum layer that are between two tetrahedral silicon uh, oxide based layer and really the, the this uh, part uh, is uh, what uh, is driving the main characteristic of the mica and what is driving also the nomenclature of this mica so for those that are not very familiar muscovite and flocopite are the two most common uh, mica uh, sources and also uh, products uh, used uh, at the industrial uh, level. This mineral has extraordinary properties, which allow this product to be converted in composites with uh, special features. They it can be converted in paper, can be converted in pre-preg, and when it converted in pre-preg, has specific features which provides to the final composite fire barrier performance and thermal and electrical insulation performance, which cannot be easily found uh, in any other uh, composite in the market. This product has also specific layer structure 
and this structure uh, explained the fact that um, compared to other crystals has very good cleverage properties so basically it tends to break into very predefined uh, shapes uh, and uh, even humans can basically cut the mica with a knife and cut two layers that have a dimension of between 10 and 30 uh, microns. We have uh, two main common types of mica uh, commercially um, used worldwide. Muscovite, which has a better crystal structure, and flocopite. And uh, for roll, uh, owns various land areas where we can mine mica uh, in Brazil. And also, after mining, we can sort uh, mica and convert this in special products, starting from uh, paper. The paper manufacturing part is certainly one of the critical steps in converting the mica from a rock to an insulating material that may found different application in the industry. After mining, sorting is the step where mica is uh, uh, cleaned with uh, from all its contaminants, and from them is converted in a, um, a paper, which relies on very weak van der Waals forces, and then is a very critical step for converting a mineral in a product that is suitable for composite application. After this process, the mica paper is impregnated. And the impregnation process is very similar to maybe what uh, all of you have seen in the industry regarding the use of uh, uh, glass or carbon reinforcement in combination with epoxy or silicon. But just in this case, this process has to be very gentle to avoid to break this um, uh, very brittle structure and can rely on a very low content of resin normally in the range between 10 and 12 percent of epoxy or silicon material and then, then after impregnation the product is transferred uh, on the final conversion uh, line where can take the form of rolls can take the forms of tapes and be delivered for the uh, isolating uh, market as i say really the pre -pre, the prepreg manufacturing process is extremely uh, uh, important for this process, but most, mostly it relies on the ability to uh, develop and to manufacture a paper that need to have a specific uh, handling characteristic. This paper only relies on the Van der Waals forces to keep the mica together, and then for roll, uh, although the process has been uh, start de de developing uh, in 1950s as uh, continue uh, improve it, the manufacturing process in the know how and thus accumulate a long last experience in creating a paper through chemical pulping and controlling of the grammage and distribution of the mica to provide a very robust uh, mica paper. You can see into this chart some uh, SEM images of um, standard mica paper which is a product where you see very compact mica flakes held together and embedded with a very low content of uh, uh, silicon resin. The normal particle size is about 500 micron, but this product also relies on a very good um, aspect ratio, which is normally in uh, uh, the range one to uh, 400. After this process, mica is converted uh, in composites that are delivered uh, by four roll in several different forms. The product portfolio of mica for battery protection includes uh, rigid mica plates that can be 2D parts or 3D parts or uh, can be delivered as flexible mica products 
where you see the composite being handled as traditional roles of preprec. You also see the possibility to use mica um, impregnated with silicon as preprec in combination with the multifunctional uh, products like additional layers of uh, uh, glass mat and silica mat to create uh, what we call it compressible mica products that have a fundamental role in uh, several battery protection applications. The most important one are for sure for cell to cell spacer and for uh, battery cover. And for this, and for the details about the application and why we use MICA for such application, I'm going to hand over to um, Christian that will provide you information about the application and the features of these products. Thank you very much, uh, Fiorenzo. I uh, hope the audio is okay. Yes, works. Okay. So um, let me introduce myself real quick. So I'm Christian Stubiken, uh, working for the Von Roll since uh, 2019, beginning uh, for the uh, spin-off, the uh, automotive company. Uh, and I'm leading there the innovation lab um, with uh, currently seven engineers. Um, yeah, I think we can start with this video. Thank you very much, Fiorenzo, um, to, to show a bit uh, about um, the application areas that we are focusing on. So. Uh, First on the top, you can see, so basically um, a solution in the market, aluminum cover, um, which uh, is not a solution for the current requirements that we see in, in China from the GTR 20. Um, and uh, basically one, one um, approach uh, that we found very interesting and uh, that we made a concept study for that we also um, have a publication from a week ago is uh, to manufacture hybrid SMC covers with um, integrated 3D mica burn through barriers, um, which we find uh, very interesting. And then the other uh, key area is what you can see now is um, the parts for in between the uh, cells. So basically cell to cell um, thermal insulation um, to, to also um, improve the performance of the battery. Yeah. So basically to stop the thermal propagation and uh, and basically there's uh, three areas where you can focus. You can um, focus uh, on, on the cell to cell, then the module to module, and then uh, as a last um, barrier on, on the case. Um, since you already skipped past the mic, I think if you're in, so you can stop the video. And that's something I will put a link also in, in the comments uh, where we have that um, uh, on on YouTube for you to watch uh, if you're interested also in other um, products. But uh, uh, today we are focusing on on the mica, so that's uh, that's the link for you later to watch if you're interested. Um, so as I said, uh, well, one of the areas is um, cell to cell protection, and there it depends a lot on on the requirements of each customer. But uh, basically, the the lowest functionality would be a very good uh, thermal insulation, also providing um, electrical insulation, and 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 of course, uh, since we are thinking about the um, the worst case scenario, the thermal runaway of the of the cells. Um, then also this electrical insulation has to still be provided at a high temperature and, and their um, mica is from our experience uh, basically the best material in the market. And also if we then think about um, higher functional integration then, then also um, we can provide compressibility behavior of these uh, parts. Uh, since you, you're dealing with the effect typically of, uh, of a swelling of um, let's say 1% of the cells. Uh, and that's also something that we focus on. And um, the materials are very, very um, good insulators. You can see here in, in the range of lower than 0 0.05 watt meter Kelvin, um, whilst at the same time still being uh, economical solutions since we are in automotive. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, um, Focusing on the thermal runaway, or to be more specific, on the on the thermal propagation. So basically, you can always have um, a fault in a cell, yeah. Uh, no matter how good your BMS is, um, which which comes from from the um, 
effects inside the battery yeah? where you can have something like dendrite growth or uh, or you can have uh, some some crashes in a car and basically then the cell can go into a thermal sort of runaway event um, leaving a lot of energy in a very very short time um, and uh, since you do not want to have the cascading effect um, or also so that the, the neighboring cells go into runaway uh, that's where these solutions come into play then um, where you can place them in between the individual cells and on the right side you can see um, that there's also a lot of uh, testing being done um, whilst uh, the development of the product and um, the boundary parameters they are quite um, I would say quite quite high, yeah, quite critical, um, because you not only have these high temperatures, but you also have um, high compression forces, and uh, therefore we built a test uh, setup where we can um, replicate this in the laboratory, um, where we will also have a publication um, in, in in short time. Um, and also, of course, uh, in, in the Innovation Lab, we also run uh, abuse tests um, with real-life cells where we also have uh, very good results where we can stop the propagation. Um, yeah, so these are some pictures, basically, of, um, of the SMC battery cover that I spoke earlier. Um, and here you can also see on the left side, uh, you can see um, the 3D-shaped mica. Uh, inserts and on the right side you can see it already integrated into the cover uh, and that's something that we can make happen in one process step so we can integrate it directly in the um, part production um, process uh, without uh, having to later fix it in in a cover or, or glue it into a cover so, so basically that's the, um, the ready solution um, yeah so, so here you can see basically the mica behavior um, in contact only with flames, um, which is, um, yeah, to, to, to us, <laughs> I think that's already boring, but, uh, but um, thinking about other materials, yeah, so you, you first have to find a material that uh, with the stents, even, even only this uh, 1200 degree uh, propane gaze burner, but, um, but basically uh, burn through, you can here uh, achieve with a, with a, um, one layer of mica paper yeah. so so that's to, to us that's not all that interesting um but still if if you're new to the material then i think that's uh, that's interesting and and basically this uh, the material can withstand this flame um, i would say indefinitely yeah since it's below uh, even still below the melting point and uh, and the the mica uh, the silicon resin that that holds everything together uh, basically has gone after some time but still the um the afterwards SEO2 structure still keeps everything in place. And so uh, this will stand it um, while staying under the melting temperature of the mica. Yeah, what you can see here is also that uh, some, some early pictures of a, of a um, different test stand. Um, and here the test stand that we uh, created is something um, having even higher temperatures. So here we can even go um, to, to higher temperatures as the, the chemistries in the batteries, they get more and more aggressive and the, the energy content also. And so basically now I would say we are in a range of about 1400 degrees for, for a venting event of a, of a large um, a prismatic cell uh, with let's say something like two and a half kilograms, 140 amp hours, um, NMC811 cells. And uh, basically also this is something where we uh, wanted to have a safe way to conduct the uh, tests in the laboratory um, environment, also uh, being uh, replicatable. Um, and uh, that's something that we built up. Uh, we also um, published something um, in the following uh, month. Uh, and um, there, we can, there we can demonstrate that the mica as with real tests uh, will also uh, withstand the testing in the laboratory and aids us in developing the materials faster. Um, here, um, my colleague already jumped to, to some real life testing and basically what you can see here is a, a minimal um, real world abuse test where you can see um, two prismatic cells, um, that are being forced into thermal runaway by nail penetration. Um, and there we test basically the cover materials that are in the direct venting area. Um, 
these, these earlier shown micro inserts into the SMC covers. Um, and also you can see the test of the cell spacer where we can demonstrate that we can stop the thermal propagation. Um, but of course, you always have to keep in mind that this also relies a lot on the customer design, which is um, different from, from case to case. Um, I will go through your questions uh, basically shortly after the presentation. Um, but yeah, please please write your questions, and I, me and Fioren, so we will take these after the presentation. Yeah, so there's a bit more shown on on these um, on these uh, cell level abuse tests, and uh, what you can see on the right hand side is basically a thermal um, uh, a picture of a of a thermal uh, video, and I think that's something that. That basically the phone roll is the first uh, that it did even that even made this possible. Yeah? So if you're into the topic, then you might know that it's not that easy to um, conduct thermal um, images of of these in in these high temperature environments and also in these environments where you uh, generate a lot of smoke. Um, and also not only relying on the thermal imaging. We, on the left side, you can see that basically we put a lot of um, a type K thermocouples uh, into the test setup. Uh, and you can see that in, in this case with a, a shield T40, um, we could stop the propagation for the um, 120 amp hour uh, MC622 cells um, that were also um, compressed against each other. So these are not just um, put on top of each other, but these are also uh, with a defined um, uh, compression as as they later also are in the in the real module. Yes, next slide, please, Fiorenz. <laughs> okay, so okay, uh, I think we jumped through it uh, quite fast. <laughs> I think it's time for us to take any questions. Uh, um, so let's see. Um, so I think we have. Uh, uh, one two minutes for um, maybe one or two questions so sounds good um so so the first question we see is basically what do you mean um with resistance above 900 degrees what happens when the temperature is above a thousand degrees no i, I I think um, I, I would say the resistance is even higher, but at some point you will come to a melting point of the mica, yeah? so which is above, um, yeah, I would say close to 1300 degrees. Yeah? Um, at, at some point, each material basically will have its limits. Yeah? Christian, I, I see another question. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Have you molded SMC and 3D shaped the mica sheets together in one tool? Or bonding by adhesive after? No, we have this in a in a one process step. Yeah, so um, we can um, directly integrate it into the uh, SMC molding process. Um, of course, there's um, yeah. So 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 there's um, some IP involved there. Yeah, so so <laughs> it's it's a process that we developed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I don't see other question in the q and a mode so with this i think we can close this web seminary thank you very much for myself and uh, well, feel free to reach out to us um did we i, ho I hope <laughs> we had our uh, email address is visible um and uh, sh should also be in the in the presentation topic thank you and have a good day Bye. Thank you very much.